All right, today I have Miss Marlisa Willis here joining me today from Girls Inc. Would you like to introduce yourself further? Uh, yes, my name is Marlisa Willis. I am the Volunteer and Development Coordinator for Girls Inc. of Central Alabama, and I was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama. Awesome. So I'm really excited to have Girls Inc. as part of this neighborhood series. And um, I was wondering if you could share just a little bit of information uh, about Girls Inc. Oh, I would love to, Joan. So Girls Inc. were actually um, located pretty much around the Crestwood area, but we were established, our particular affiliate was established in 1938. And the mission of Girls Inc. is to inspire all girls. So if you identify as a girl, you are a girl to us. And we inspire all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And we do that through a series of multi-tiered programming. We have STEM, focused programs. We have programs that are focused on um, healthy behaviors, healthy relationships. We have programs that are focused on getting to know the whole girl. So we treat girls holistically. So that means mind, body, soul, everything in between so that they can go on to grow up to inspire the next generation of girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Oh, that's amazing. That's just really beautiful. So what, um, what age uh, range of, of girls to uh, come to your, uh, do you have a center that they come and visit? Yes, we have a center in the Crestwood neighborhood and we uh -huh. also do programming um, in the community. So our actual physical center is in Crestwood and we do after school care and summer camp there. And then we also have programming in Walker County. Um, we usually rent or get donated a space to perform to programming there for after school and camp. And then we also do a series of community based involvement throughout the five county area. So that's Jefferson, St. Clair, Shelby, um, Blunt and Walker County. That's wonderful. So you're, you're basically uh, serving the entire Birmingham community. <laughs> <laughs> so um and, and what age range is it is it from like you know like kindergarten or is it like first grade to like high school kids or yeah we usually start when they're going like as far as if they start in the summer with us we'll be rising to first grade um and we have programming that will pretty much treat the girls from six all the way to 18. oh awesome uh, yeah, we actually have a team program. Um, we have our Eureka program, which is a STEM-based program. The girls actually move forward together as a cohort. So they start rising eighth grade, and then they will stay in the program until um, they graduate. And once they graduate, um, they qualify for all types of girls in scholarships. They actually do internships their last two um, years of the program. So right now we actually have been um, very, 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 very blessed to actually have a partnership with Lockheed Martin, um, which is an aerospace <laughs> um, engineering company. And so some of our girls are interning there. They intern here at the center with us, or they'll intern at other community and corporate partnerships that we have. Like how, how is um, Girls Inc. operating during COVID? Um, have, has your programming changed and um, in, in what ways is it? Well, how we changed. <laughs> youth development organization that we can't interact with our youth. <laughs> but we've been able to, which I think is, is, you know, a blessing in disguise. We've been able to pivot. Um, and by pivoting our programming, we're, the curriculum stays the same, the intent stays the same, the impact stays the same. It's just performed in a different medium. So when we first had to close our doors initially when we were all sheltering in place, uh, we actually transitioned into a virtual programming. And so the way that we did our virtual programming to make it not just accessible to our girls, but to all girls is by changing to a YouTube channel. So we actually took our YouTube channel, which was pretty much a fossil that had been kind of dormant for a while, and we turned it into our virtual academy. So we have the Girls Inc. Virtual Academy, which during the height of the um, pandemic, we were posting um, two to three videos a week, and we've kind of like lessened that to about once or twice a month because we are actively doing Zoom calls and everything else now. But we were posting uh, DIY crafts, science crafts. I think the first video we posted was how to make your own lava lamp at home. Oh, wow. You know, just, 
so girls can see their favorite teachers that they're used to seeing at the center. Because, you know, it's a lot for our girls, regardless of age or grade or, or school income, anything. Everyone just had to stop. Like our girls didn't, our older girls didn't get to go to prom. They didn't get to have a graduation. Most of them didn't. Our younger girls just were there on Friday and then they just found out Monday they're not going to school anymore. And then that means there's there's no school. There's no girls in when you get off of school. So we had to give them something to make sure that they could see us and know us. And a lot of our parents are essential workers, so they don't necessarily have the time to become uh, home schoolers. So we give you something accessible. If you get off work and you're tired and your, your, your daughter needs some type of stimulation and enrichment, and her your phone. If you don't have a computer, you don't have a tablet, pull up the YouTube app and just let it play. You know, we have playlists. We even, we have a Hispanic interest um, program. So our instructor there did all of her videos in Spanish so that her girls and their families could be more aware of what COVID was, what was going on with it. Um, they did personal hygiene tips and everything else that our girls would normally get in the classroom. They're now being able to get directly to their phone. And in regards to camp, we made the decision to expand our summer camp virtually as well. Some of our girls had to go stay with family members out of state. So we shipped out kits, book bags, um, supplies. So everything that they need in order to do the experiments in their science class, they'll have in front of them. If they're baking or making something, our girls that are here locally, we dropped off um, our bowl kitchen boxes last Friday so that the girls can make their recipes like I think yesterday they made Mexican pinwheels with Miss Jasmine so you know parents don't have time to go to the store and buy stuff that they may not always have in stock so we went to the store got it together labeled the boxes where each girl has their own box so when they got a package they felt like it was specifically for them and that's the type of attitude we have for to our girls is that you all matter, you're all special. When you walk through that door, no one is better than anybody. We're all equal and we're all there to lift each other up. So we make sure that we embody that in everything that we do. And these kits and these boxes and the Zoom calls and all of that is at no cost to our parents at the moment because it just doesn't feel right for us to charge them for programming like they would if the girls were coming here and being physically in the center, physically, you know, with their teachers, getting looked after and everything because it's a Zoom call and because of, you know, we had to do everything a little bit differently. We had to approach things differently as well. And that was just one of the many ways that we've decided decided to pivot in the chaos and craziness that is 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it is a chaotic year to say the least. Um, I just love all of that. You know, I didn't really know a lot about Girls Inc. B before now. And that's something I really have loved about all of these interviews is learning so much about these beautiful nonprofits in our area. And um, I wanted to ask you a few questions about like, how do you get funding? Um, how does Girls Inc. get funding? And like, how many people typically like on like work at Girls Inc. or, you know, are volunteers like per, I guess, like fiscal year usually? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I can definitely tell you that. <laughs> that covers both of my roles. <laughs> so as far as funding, I'll start there, Joan. Um, with our funding, we depend a lot on our individual supporters. They make up the largest percentage of donors we receive. And But we also are very, very grateful. We get a lot of um, grants. We, have, we apply for a lot more, but we do get some. And we um, have cor corporate partnerships, um, growth initiatives, things of that nature. But mainly it is the everyday person like you and I who just donates, whether it's $20, $200, $1,000, which we call our champions for girls. That's pretty much what keeps us going at this point in time. Because normally, even though we do, our parents, most of our parents, it's not all, but most of our parents do pay for programming with us as far as in the center. Um, that's still a very discounted rate compared to a lot of other organizations and youth development agencies. So we don't rely heavily on our parents to keep us going. We want to make it possible so that whether your daughter is um, rocking, you know, the latest New Jordans when they come out or she's wearing last year's shoes, whatever, you know, you can afford, you're able to pay. We give scholarships to parents who are, who are in need. Um, just like I said, when we do the kits and stuff, we 
that's all free services to our parents. And we incorporate costs as we need to, but right now we're getting our funding mainly do our, through our donors. So we'll do appeals periodically throughout the year. Our actual biggest fundraiser, which is usually our only fundraiser that is like an in-person an event is the Cajun cook-off and I don't know if a lot of people knew Cajun cook-off was us but <laughs> our junior board which we call our committee of 25 and our um, board of directors will work together to to plan out the logistics and stuff for that and, and myself and my team will go through and, and make sure everything goes according to a plan and I believe we were maybe like two or three weeks from Cajun cook-off when everything shut down <laughs> <laughs> Because we usually expect like 500 plus people. And then the, the um, health department was like, if you have a gathering of over 50 people. And I was like, well, there it goes. <laughs> but that usually is our biggest fundraiser. We usually get um, at least $60,000 from that event. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yes. It I was. mean, who doesn't love a Cajun cook off? That sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, all the etouffee, jambalaya, all you want for one ticket. Nice. <laughs> and we usually only have a bar and everything, but because of COVID, we've had to pivot away from that as well. So we were not able to have that. Um, we did have several sponsors, including our title sponsor, the Publix and Blue Cross Blue Shield and other large, you know, generous and philip philanthropic uh, companies around the city who decided to keep their sponsorship to go towards our operating costs. So that was a big help when we first initially had to adjust everything due to COVID. Um, and now my favorite thing, the volunteers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for volunteers. Um, as a volunteer coordinator, I pretty much see every volunteer that comes through our doors. Um, we're very grateful to also be a, um, a site that hosts AmeriCorps members. So I don't know how much you know about those, but I was also an AmeriCorps member through the YWCA, but as a federal program and they actually are get paid to do community service for a year. And we're a host site, so we actually were blessed to have two AmeriCorps members this year. And one, we actually were able to transition to our team and I grabbed her and she's in marketing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another one is over our mentoring um, project. So we actually been able to have stay, you know, almost like stay in place volunteers that we can depend on, that we can count on and like treat, you know, we treat them like a part of the staff. And when they're done serving their year, if they want to renew, they can. If they don't, they need to move on to another site or, you know, move forward in their careers professionally. But we also have some of the best volunteers. When we first shut down, people were emailing me left and right. Oh, I can't wait to see the girls again. I don't, you know, let me know what you need. Um, how can I help? Do you need, I can donate some books. And <laughs> You know, like <laughs> everything that you could possibly wish for is a nonprofit. We, we really do get those in our volunteers. And because we've had to pivot, we actually, um, my team and I are actually um, about to launch our new ambassador program. And so we are taking applications for that from now until Friday. Friday's the last day. We've been pushing it for about three, three to four weeks. And that program is going to be initially like our brand ambassadors. So they're going to be the people who are going to be our faces and our eyes and our ears and represent the brand outside of the Girls Inc. of Central Alabama page. They're going to highlight events. And if we have fundraisers, they're going to share that information. They're also going to help us come up with new ideas so we can take a fresh approach. And this is a volunteer activity that, you know, is because it's going to be a small group of individuals, there is an application process, but I'm excited because this is like my first big brainchild I've been able to give birth to post corona you know, <laughs> world. So um, outside of that, we'll, we have, we had wonderful interns this summer. We'll have wonderful interns in the fall if we are able to do that with programming. Um, and we just have amazing people who are, are dedicated to uplifting our girls and they may not ever interact with the girl but they're definitely going to make an impact on the girl that's beautiful I love I love this idea of the ambassador program and bringing in like fresh ideas you know because I yes. feel like that's so important and and I just love your passion just sitting here and, and watching you talk about you know what y'all are doing and your role like it's, it's such a beautiful thing and um 
Thank you. Thank you for working uh, at Girls Inc. Because, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I wish that I had Girls Inc. as a child, you know, like, because I definitely needed it. You know? Yeah, I, I think part of my passion comes from the fact I, I am a product of Girls Inc. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yes, we used to have a center in Bessemer, Alabama, and I actually went there for a few summers, and um, that kind of instilled, um, it definitely helped cultivate the boldness, as my mom <laughs> would like to, um, you know, exaggerate. Um, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> the bold definitely stayed with me throughout my life, um, and it's just full circle that I was able to come back and serve in that capacity as a, a Girls Inc. staff member. Oh, that's so wonderful. I love to hear it. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are a part of the series. Um, you know, and I also wanted to make a comment about you saying, you know, when the girls come in, they're all equals. You know, I just, I love that because I think that's very important. I, I think that's important for all people, but especially women, you know, and, and little mm -hmm. girls because we're all like on the same team, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the kids, when they grow up, it's like, especially girls, they can be like super catty against each other. And I, I really think that's great that you're teaching them that everyone comes to this to the same table as equals. Um, so we're going to like move over a little more to the personal side of, and I know your work is personal. Um, and that's why I, oh, I just love that. You're so passionate. Um, what have you been doing during this weird time of COVID? Like, um, what are the things that bring you joy? And how are you making time for it? Have you picked up any new hobbies? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how are you, how are you staying sane? <laughs> uh, I've been working a lot. <laughs> Um, between YouTube channels, ambassador programs, and, and pivoting for donations and things like that, I, I've been focusing a lot more on work. It's a lot easier when we when we were sheltering in place, all of us were remote for a period of time, and now we have a staggering schedule where on some days this person will be in the office and some days another person will be in the office, so we're not, you know, so we're able to maintain healthy and, and safe social distancing practices. But one of the things that um, I've been doing, um, honestly, I've just been watching my favorite trash television shows. <laughs> uh, I am 90 Day Fiance fanatic. Um, I watch all of the spinoffs except before the 90 days because I don't get invested in them before they have a visa. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that and then I video chat with my friends a lot. Um, we did a social distance barbecue um, a couple of weeks ago in a friend's backyard so just like you know keeping tabs on the people that matter to me most and as far as hobbies um, learning how to edit for YouTube was a new hobby I learned how to do. <laughs> same <laughs> A very generic video editor. <laughs> I have to <laughs> Yeah, same. I'm still learning. It's like, okay, this is fine. <laughs> Just make it look kind of good, you know? Make it work. Yeah. Right. And then you think you're fancy because you're like, okay, I'm going to put a background music. I'm going to learn. Oh, this is what a lower 30 is. Okay, I'm going to do that. <laughs> in a lot of um cooking at home and i am you know ship's favorite person in the world because i love a good ship order where i don't have to go and get change out of my yoga pants so is I'm it good I i've wanted to try it but i haven't tried it i love it um i love it i convinced my mom to do it because she won't do right i tell her she's hard-headed <laughs> So it was, we split a membership and so you can add multiple addresses. So like if you have a, a loved one that you need to um, send groceries to and they might not be able to afford it or they might not be able to physically go out, you can send a delivery of groceries to their house as well, regardless of the, you know, as long as it's in a shipped area. Um, but it's been the best thing for me because one, I stay on the third floor. Uh, <laughs> and two, I don't like crowds. And three, still a pandemic outside. So I'm very grateful for all of the ship, the ship, and the door <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> so um, I guess a, a library question for you. Um, mm -hmm. What are your favorite books or films, or do you have favorite artists? Like anything that inspires your life's work, or just you in general? What are you reading lately? Uh, hmm. Any of I the above. <laughs> 
all of the above. <laughs> um, let's see. I would say probably one of my favorite movies um, is uh, Shawshank Redemption. Um, one, because, you know, Morgan Freeman. But, um, Powerful movie. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just a... a I don't watch all the scenes, like I skip through some of the sad scenes, but I just kind of like watching how people intertwine humor into drama to give it a little bit of levity. Um, mm -hmm. And another thing that kind of got me through the last couple of months of quarantine was watching Insecure. I'm a big fan of anything Issa Rae does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's just awesome. I love her confidence in what she does, but I also like her. She she's a she's a very good storyteller, but she's very unapologetic in her storytelling. So visually, that's kind of what I've been concentrating on outside of my trash TV. Um, and as far as books, I um, have a lot of autobiographies that have been stacking up on my bookshelf. Um, I have Jonathan Van Ness's autobiography, of course. You know, I have Becoming who. I would not be able to wear this shirt if I hadn't got coming. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Gabrielle Unions. And then um, before we had, before the pandemic hit in January, we actually had the honor of hosting Centoya Brown um, at our center. So before nice. she did her before she did her conversation with the junior lead um, the next day, she actually came to Girls Inc. and presented her story to a group of our um, our young women in our team leadership in our Eureka program. And so she actually signed the copies of her book, and I got that book as well. And then I'm also really big into sci-fi, so like I love like Octavia, Octavia, but not Octavia, Octavia Butler, <laughs> and people like that. So I love a good adventure, and I love something that just kind of gives me a different perspective on life. Um, so those are my kind of go-tos when it comes to reading or, you know, audio books. And, and as far as visual, I love a good story. So like pretty much anything with Issa Rae, anything with Angela Bassett, and anything with Samuel L. Jackson, because sometimes you just need somebody that's just going to cuss the whole time to get you through. <laughs> He's amazing. I don't know. I always think of him in like in like Pulp Fiction, you know, like <laughs> like the scene with that burger. <laughs> but him in just like anything, you know. And then like you said, Angela Bassett. Isn't she an mm -hmm. American Horror Story too? She does not age. No. <laughs> like, like I'm like, what? What is your skincare re regime? Because you're just. She still has like a six pack it's ridiculous <laughs> i just want to thank you again for for joining me today and for having a little talk and i just think you're such a beautiful person and um i've been so fortunate to find out about girls inc today like i would really love to help out any way i can and get one of those shirts <laughs> asap i'm gonna be going online after this um <laughs> but in what ways can the community uh show their support for Girls Inc. right now, and, and what, what can they do? Um, money is always a great start. <laughs> um, definitely um, donate, donate, donate. Um, they can definitely donate to us directly through our website. Um, uh, we also have the donate button on our Instagram page, as well as there's a, a, I believe there's a link on Facebook also, but directly to our site is always the best way to go. Um, if you're not able to donate or financially able to donate, or you just, some people just don't like giving money and they don't get to physically see where it goes. We do, we accept in-kind donations. If you have books you wanna drop off to the girls or maybe you design shirts or something. Like we had a partnership with Yellow, Ham, Yellow Hammer Creative. We were a part of their local series. Um, and we actually were able to sell 40 shirts through them in just a week. <laughs> So, awesome. you know, when you see things like that, maybe just buying a shirt or we had a young lady yesterday um, on Instagram because, you know, everyone's doing the black and white challenge to raise awareness about the women in Turkey. Um, she said, I just didn't feel good posting a picture because all of this is going on, but I researched Girls Inc. and I wanted to tell you about Girls Inc. and you can donate today. She's like, 
I'm going to give them a little bit, but if you can here, if you don't here, share this, share this page and, you know, just kind of, even if you're not an official ambassador, being our ambassador, being our voice, advocating for young women, when bills come up and you know that your congressman or your congresswoman or your congressperson may not be leaning towards the best idea for girls, you know, stand up for girls, stand up for those, you know, those titles and those amendments and those changes that actually impact women and girls because, you know, whether it's birth control or, you know, the A word, abortion or anything like that, if it's a women's health issue, it's a humanity issue because women's health is what drives humanity for it. We literally birthed the nation. <laughs> So keeping that in mind, talking to your daughters, breathing life into your children, um, not necessarily just focusing on building up your girls, but teaching your young boys and, and male um, identifying children to respect women in films and making sure that everyone's voice is heard. Um, and there's not going to be equality until we receive equity. And so just understanding the differences between that, educating yourself, learning new things, listening to podcasts. Michelle Obama just launched her podcast yes. today. <laughs> <Great stuff. laughs> if you have questions, just reaching out to us. I mean, like we're a woman-led organization, but we're just one affiliate out of 300 plus. So Girls Inc. is a national organization. So if someone's watching this and they may not be in the Central Alabama area and they may be like, well, how do I help girls near me? Look up your local affiliate. Usually there's one either close to you or near you. And if it's not, you know, work with them until they're able to expand their area. So like, even though we're in a five county area, there's always room for improvement. There are always like some little touches of the metropolitan area we haven't been able to reach. So, you know, partnering with other organizations, if you're an organization or a corporate entity and you want to help, reaching out to me, read, oh, Dr. Connie Hill, you know, just doing things that may take a little bit of effort, but not a lot of time. And anything you do, whether you give us like a $1 donation or a $1,000 donation, it matters because it goes to our girls. If you want it to designate it to a specific program that you read about, like if people are like, man, I really like this STEM thing. Great. You can donate directly to Eureka <laughs> and you can help make sure these girls keep getting these paid internships that they're on. You can, you can make sure that um, our staff and our programming, um, our programming crew are getting paid and making sure that we have supplies and and things that we need to be able to do and ship these kits and these snacks and things to our girls so that they never feel like we've forgotten about them because that's our main thing is making sure that our girls know that we are always thinking about them so whether we have three girls on a zoom call or 30 like everybody gets a shout out everybody gets their time we have like a little assembly in the mornings where they get to see each other before they go out in breakout rooms in their different classes for the day so just keep in mind and just helping out and if you can't financially give and you may not have a big network you can volunteer I'm the person that helps you volunteer. <laughs> so sending me an email telling me what you're good at, even if you may not necessarily be great with children. Maybe you're a handyman or a handywoman, and you just want to help fix up some things. I'm sure we got some lights out somewhere that can be replaced. I'm sure we have paint chips that, <laughs> that can be redone. So yeah, there's no job too big or too small that, you know, we'll make a way for it. So definitely like not counting yourself out, just giving yourself the benefit of doubt that no matter how big or how small, your impact will resonate. It'll be just like a drop in the bucket and it's a ripple effect. So we'll take a little bit, but we'll do a lot with it. Absolutely. I just love everything that, that Girls Inc. is doing in the community. And I love your story of, of being a product of, of Girls Inc. And Thank you so much for your time today. This has been amazing. Can I, uh, going back to the shirts, can I, can I get a, <laughs> can I buy a shirt on the website? Um, as of right now, you cannot, but I am working on that, Joan. Okay. But, <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> but for you, I can get that and take care of that for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to make a donation. I mean, I feel like, you know, we all have to work together and, you know, in order to make great change. And it sounds like y'all are doing doing 
doing the Lord's work at Girls Inc. And uh, I've, been, I've loved having you today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate you.